In this video I'm going to do question 1J, the last one of the short answer questions from the Oxford MAT from 2017. Should be pretty tricky by this stage. It says which of these integrals has the largest value? You're not expected to calculate the exact value of any of these. Um, and so the clue here, you're not expected to calculate the exact value, means that I think in some way the answer is going to involve some approximation. Uh, I'm going to expect there to be an answer that really maybe stands out. Uh, when I start thinking about these functions. So let's have a look at uh, them. Which one am I drawn to here? Sine to the 100 x dx. That looks kind of interesting. So uh, between just 0 and pi. Now sine x between 0 and pi looks something uh, looks something like this. Okay. Now sine to the 100 x. You know, when you raise 1 to the 100 you get 1. So it stays here. And the rest of the uh, any other number between 0 and 1 to the power of 100 is going to get really tiny so I guess this function is just going to basically spike up at, around here and look something like this. So basically this integral is going to be uh, quite small, right? I'm going to say, I'm not going to say it's equal to 0 but it's not going to be that far away from 0. Uh, that's all I'll think about that one for now. Let's try a different one. Um, okay, what about this one? Let's think about what this will look like. 108 sine cubed x minus 1 between 0 and 8 pi. Uh, I'm just going to worry about it from 0 to 2 pi because it'll then repeat every 2 pi after that. So as uh, sine cubed x minus 1, okay, so again I've got sine uh, that's going to uh, look like this, but sine cubed is still going to be between, it's still going to be between minus 1 and 1. Uh, so if I do sine cubed minus 1, uh, well, it's all going to be contained within the region between 0 and minus 2, whatever it looks like. Uh, so in particular, it's always going to be negative. Okay, so actually that one must be smaller than, you know, the total area here, uh, you know, as an integral is going to be negative, so it's definitely smaller than c, so I can, I can rule that one out. Um, let's have a look at a, x squared minus 4 times sine 8 uh, pi uh, pi x okay um, between 0 and 2 uh, x squared minus 4 okay so just uh, so this is why it was x squared where it was x squared minus 4 between 0 and 2 is negative and sine to the power of 8 it's an even power is always positive so again the integrand here is going to be negative for all values so it's going to be a curve entirely below the axis, so that one's going to be negative. So it looks like I've, uh, C is still winning here, is the only one that's positive so far. Um, let's have a look at B, 2 plus cos cubed x, uh, all cubed dx, so cos x, uh, cos x is going to look something like this between 0 and 2 pi, it goes up to 1, down to minus 1. If I add 2 to it, it's going to be uh, between 1 and 3 and look something like that and then I'm going to cube those numbers so the kind of values I'm going to end up with are going to be between 1 and 3 cubed which is going to be values between 1 and 27 okay so this one's definitely bigger than C it's a reasonably large positive integral and let's just look at D then uh, 3 minus sine x to the 6 again if I've got minus uh, sine x is going to look like this, uh, so if we do minus sine x plus 3, that's going to take these to values uh, between uh, 2 and 4. Okay, so it's going to be, it's going to look something like this, and it's going to be going from 2 at the bottom here to 4 at the top. But then I'm raising these numbers to the power of 6, right? So all of the y coordinates here are going to be between 2 to the 6 and 4 to the 6. So these are just going to be way bigger than. Uh, 27. So without doing any more precise calculations I can see that the largest integral, the largest uh, area that I'm looking at above the above the x-axis here is going to be d. And that's really the sort of logic you need to be to, to, to do these papers. We don't have time to be at all precise in working out any of these integrals. You're meant to be able to, if you're going to do this question, do it in a, in a few minutes and get on with the rest of the paper. So, um, so I hope that's useful you know, think uh, think about the maths, you know, to do this sort of question you need to know graph transformations, some, have some intuition about integration and have that all really set, but then you've also got to be really practical 
and problem solving and get on with it in the time. So I hope that's been useful. Um, that's the end of the short answer questions for the MAT for this playlist. I'm going to do some of the long answer questions as well, so watch out for those in the near future.